Welcome to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. Today, we have a lot of really cool stuff for you. We're going to talk about the resurrection of libraries and how our generation, who gets flack for everything, millennials and Gen Z, are actually reviving them. We're also going to chat a little bit about an article that Kristen has that was published back in 2010 and maybe impeded the use of libraries. Oh, I don't have an actual article. I was just going off of memory about the fear-mongering of the time. Oh, well, she's going to do that. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I want to show you this really cool tool I found to better utilize and know what books are available to you um, at your library resources. So be sure to wait for that because I'm very excited to show you. And then we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do at your local library outside of just going in and borrowing a physical book because there's so much more. So be sure to check the timestamps down below if you want to jump to a certain section. Uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. It really helps us out. Back in 2023, the American Library Association came out with a study and they found that Gen Z and millennials are actually visiting libraries at a higher rate than any other generation. So in the study, they found that 54% of the uh, group surveyed had gone into a brick and mortar library location in the past year. So, and that's funny because I've been into Have a- Have you been- <laughs> I was just gonna ask you. <laughs> Yeah, so I have I haven't been to my library in the past year. I've been into a different like a different library in like when I was traveling a, a different lot. country. Yes, a different country, <laughs> and um, so I've been in libraries, but I have not gone to my physical library in quite some time, actually. Um, but that it's funny because I using the tool that I'm going to show you guys later, I actually looked up if they had Witcher 2 in copy, and they, they do. So I'm going to be going into my library to get the second book of Witcher because I am enjoying physical books more right now. So this really speaks to me because going to the library and getting a physical book, I'm a millennial, so like this just all makes sense to me. Ooh, here's a question for you. Sorry to side rail everything again. Do you know how to use the Dewey Decimal System? Like if somebody handed you. I used to as a kid when we actually like in school went into the library and they taught you that stuff. But I haven't used it in so long that I would have to like look it up. Now question to all of our uh, Gen Z listeners. Do you know what a Dewey Decimal System is? Comment down below, please. I want to know the answer <laughs> to that so bad. So bad. Am I making stuff up or is it a real thing? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the things kind of driving, you know, our generation into libraries is we have so much media at our fingertips, right? We have phones, we have TV, we have all these things, but a lot of what we're consuming is actually adaptations, right? So, like, there's so many movies and TV shows that are adaptations of novels. So like I just mentioned The Witcher, Bridgerton is another one. And in the same article that I have posted in our show notes, they actually call that out. They say that so an example would be Bridgerton. Bridgerton was a huge phenomenon on Netflix. Print sales shot up 300%. Ebook sales went up 8 thousand percent so that's really gen z and millennials saying we saw this we like this we want more and i thought that was a very yeah. good way to put this because i mean you think of like i'm gonna use this example because it's, it's so many people right now can relate to it even though the fandom's kind of toxic um akatar sjm Everybody wants more of that so they're going out and finding other ways to consume it fan fiction art um, like all of this other stuff, they want more. So it makes a ton of sense, especially where like with the financial burden that our generations have to go and find it for free or go and Cheap. find. 
to do. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And another crazy statistic that I saw, because it doesn't feel like that long ago, but I under I also understand that it is 32 years ago. In 1992, printed material <laughs> accounted for more than 95% total collection size at public libraries. Three decades later, that hurts, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Digital materials now comprise 58% of their collections. So, if you did you ever did you ever listen to an ebook on a tape? Yes. Not a CD, but a literal tape where you oh, had to no. like take the pencil and like not on, grind it. Not on a tape, but I've I've listened to music. No, 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 no. I did because when we were kids, I had like Disney books on tape. And you'd get to a really good part and it would go flip over tape. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's super awesome i fun fact i also have um some disney books on record on vinyl they were my mom's Ooh. when she was a little kid books books disney like an audiobook on vinyl yeah oh my god dude we gotta get together and listen to those holy <laughs> shit we should do a whole live where you like <laughs> set that up and we listen to a, a disney book on vinyl yeah what an experience. Oh, shit. Will you come visit me this summer? Hell yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. What other books do they have on vinyl? They have. You should Google it. It's pretty cool. No more tangents. Let's, Let's stay focused. Going. So <laughs> are you surprised by any of this, Kristen? No. Um, to be honest, it seems to me that like millennials are a much larger generation. So obviously there's going to be more of them doing things so to me that seems like a skewed statistician number and the other thing is that like obviously technology has changed mm -hmm. so obviously there's going to be more i don't know i like the sentiment of the article but it seems like the numbers to me are a little forced like they're forced into mm -hmm. being shocking mm -hmm. but if you take a second and think about them you're like that all makes total sense yeah because i i also think they only like surveyed just just under 2,500. walking out of libraries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where the how they their where their pool came from, but I do know that there was like 2,500 people surveyed. So very mm -hmm. small yeah. collection of people. But I still feel like so many of the people I know have some level of use out of their library. And I mean, think about it. It's one of the last few places that you can go and exist for free. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy a coffee. You don't have to tip anybody. When you go to check out that library book, the librarian's not going to turn the little pad around and be like, it's just going to ask you a few questions, right? And ask for a 15% tip on her library checking out skills. <laughs> so it's the last place that you can just exist for free. You don't, there's no music playing, like at a coffee shop where you're like, God damn, it's so freaking loud. There's nobody talking, so you're not listening to other people's dumb conversations while you're trying to, like, exist. Mm -hmm. I think libraries should be so much more popular. So, so, so much more popular. Go to your local library. Mm -hmm. Just go hang out there for a day. Yep. And I think ultimately, that will be one of the big things that revives libraries, is because, like you said earlier, we're, as a generation life is so expensive and so to have somewhere that you can just go hang out for free yep you're a child of the 90s you love to read you probably spent a ton of time at your local library as a child right yeah you know i mean that's where we spent our weekends we'd go get books <laughs> hang out there you know um but in i want to say it was like 2010 2008 2010 an article came out fear-mongering that if you don't return a book or if you lose it or it's past due when you do return it, that the library, library will charge you a fee, which is true, and that if you don't pay that fee, they'll report it to the credit bureau and destroy your credit and you'll never be able to buy a house. What? All over 10 cents, a 10 cent library fee. Oh my gosh. And I think 
the information is technically true. They can, if you have overdue fees, after X number of years, they can, in fact, send that to a credit bureau or collections, right? But, come on. Just go in and check your balance, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, I think that article uh, s- like swayed a lot of people from... Or become it made a lot of people fearful of borrowing from their local library. Yeah, I um, can see I why. Think that's, I think so. I think that led a lot of people to not going to the library anymore because they were petrified of borrowing a book, losing it, forgetting to return it, and then slippery slope, never being able to buy a house. Yeah. So, which is a, on a lot of people's list of things to do in life. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but just the thing is, keep going into the library, right? Mm Because the next time you go to check out a book, they'll be like, hey, we see you didn't return this book and the lost book fee is $5 or whatever it is. Yeah. So the idea is to frequent your library more so that you know if you have any fees. (laughs) Yes. Stay on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that scared a lot of people away from libraries and i think um we're it's being libraries are being revived one you can't get charged for an ebook being lost or misplaced or not returned right Mm -hmm. but i think we're seeing the rise of people that don't know about that or weren't terrified of that coming back to libraries and being like wow this is a cool place why did my parents not let me come here when i was a kid (laughs) yeah yeah because like my library offers so much stuff like, even in person, not just in their digital portfolio, but, because we kind of talked about that and covered that, but, like, they have a full calendar every month that's completely planned out and tells you, because, I like, our district is pretty is a pretty good size with a lot of locations, and it will tell you what location it's happening at, at what time, and everything. There's, I mean, there's everything from read-alongs for different age groups. There's craft nights. They have a Lego club. I don't know what they do there, oh my God. but that's great. <laughs> um, they have a D and D night, so Dungeons and Dragons, so people can come and play at the library. Which I've always wanted to learn. So that seems like a really safe space to go in and in like learn. They have yeah. cleanup events because like um, Earth Day is people today. Are gross and disgusting. Yeah, that's really. I'm pretty. Yeah, Earth Day is today. Let me double check. I should go plant a tree. I should go plant a tree somewhere inconvenient. Oh, it's tomorrow. My mistake. So tomorrow... (gasps) We can plant a tree together! (laughs) We could. We could. I'm just going to sprinkle seeds around the airport. I was just going to say I should get some wildflower seeds and sprinkle sprinkle them as we walk. (laughs) Oh, hell yeah. They're having an Earth Day cleanup day tomorrow... And they also have a book mobile that will go to different parks when the weather's nice and do a little pop-up library at different parks in the community. Oh, my God. Can yeah. you imagine pulling up and then, okay, I guess you can't imagine because it's your neighborhood, but how fun it would be to just sit in the park on a blanket and read a book. With snacks? Yeah. That sounds- and then you just turn that book back in, pack up your blanket. And... Pick up your trash from your snacks, since we just talked about Earth Day, and and go home. (laughs) There's a couple other things that, like, blew me away. So, if you call, my library has this number for phone a story. So, you can call in and somebody will tell, like, read you a short story over the phone through this phone number. Oh my god, let's do it. Not right now. Never we, mind. We should do that, that for an episode, though. We should. That would be fun. Yeah. And then they have a seed library. So, like, for plants, for a garden. So you can go in and get seeds for to, like, plant food. So you don't have to spend $8 a pack like you do at Home Depot and Walmart? Yeah. I don't know how much it is in your area. I don't I was shocked at how expensive seeds are. Yeah, I don't know either. But, like, yeah. One of the coolest things, though, is they actually have a library of things. And so, 
Yeah, so, you know, we have an episode about, like, gadgets to help you, like, read better and stuff or, in like, elevate your, your reading. My library has a a branch that is designed for the visually and physically impaired. So they have so many things that you can check out, but some of the things that they have is actually like magnifying glasses that like you can hold over the, the whole page and it makes it bigger so you can read it better. They have um, a tool that is for pairs with certain books and it will read it out loud as you read the physical book. Um, they have so much stuff. They also have tools, like a code reader for a car. They have camping gear, yard games. They had a Nintendo Switch, instruments that you can go and you can borrow and check out these things, these items. So, like, they had hammocks yeah. and chairs and for camping, and they had tons of yard games. I had no idea, like, I was like... I'm having a birthday party and I wanted some yard games. Those would be perfect. I could go check them out from the library and use them for the weekend and return them. Because yard games can be expensive, right? So Upwards expensive. Upwards of $100 or more. Yeah. And you're going to use them two weekends out of the year? Yep. It's, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I just... I was so shocked, so blown away. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, um, I don't even know if you can file paper taxes anymore, but you could go into the library and they would have all the rows of forms of all the different mm -hmm. taxes you needed. And you, we would just go in to the library, pick up our little tax form for free, fill it out with a pen for free, and then mail it in for 20 cents or whatever it costs to mail a letter. I don't know what that is to mail a, a letter. Stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite free, but <laughs> pretty dang close. Yeah. Shy of the hundred dollars I spent this year. <laughs> um, I mean, they have a lot, and I'm sure it depends on the area, right? Because public libraries are funded by your city, so it depends on the taxes and how important your city deems that library, as well as private donors. So I'm sure a lot of the camping gear and stuff um, was donated. We all have options. You can donate to the ARC or secondhand stores, or you could probably donate to your library, depending on how gently used some of that stuff is yeah that's great actually that's a great point because we have some camping stuff that we camping is a big part of our lives so we have like duplicates of some stuff and we've like been slowly like finding out what we actually use on the road like on the road when we camp and stuff and we've been like making our our stuff like smaller and more concise so it would be a great place for us to see if they're interested in having those for their library of things yeah i don't i just made up that they take donations i don't know if they take donations or if it has to be brand new i don't know it's worth asking though that's the point like i would like yeah. i <laughs> i called them the other day and was like hey do you guys take like it's almost a brand new book like i decided i'm probably not going to read it and i wanted to donate it do you take donations they're like yeah absolutely we take donations they, we just want them in pretty Fair. decent condition we don't want like something that's falling apart but we you know if it's in good condition we'll take it and so i was like cool so i'm just gonna go drop it off yeah i mean the list goes on though right i mean that's yours were some of the cooler stuff that you'd want to use <laughs> um this list might be a little outdated did you know some locations, some libraries have sewing machines that you can rent? Oh, that's really cool. Um, so I think a lot of this stuff is going to be fairly unique. It, this is a fairly long list. Um, but again, I would imagine it depends on your library. Yeah. Uh, computer classes. I don't know how many people use those anymore. Like I said, this might be a little outdated. Did you have to take the typing classes? Yes. Did you ever take a typing class? In the library, little, in the computer room. Yeah, and they had, was yours the game? Yes. Yep. Yeah, for you, they would, like, read a story, and you had to, like, try to, like, keep up and type what they were saying. Yeah. Ours had a little ghost on it. Was yours a ghost? Ours was a ghost. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I remember. Ours was, you had, like, a little shelf, like, a little shelf of books, and then you just, like, click on the book that you wanted, and this little ghost would read it to you. And you'd try to, like, keep up while he was talking and type what he was saying. Oh, wow. That sounds like a lot of fun. 
And then the teacher would be like, you're doing too well, and they'd come over and put a piece of paper over your hands. So you couldn't see the keyboard anymore. That's vicious. Yeah, so you can borrow movies. There's lots of classes. They do resume and job help. Some of them offer free lawyer services. Hmm. I don't know how extensive that gets. Definitely before you get a free lawyer, Google um, client lawyer privileges before you spill secrets to some person claiming to be a lawyer. Just say. Tax help. Some libraries have knitting classes, OSHA training, uh, driving classes, craft classes. I think you mentioned that as well. Some do concerts and some do weekly movie screenings. You can go to the library and watch a movie with a group of people. Ours has movie uh, Mondays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Denver Public Libraries, you can borrow a pass and visit all 42 state parks in the state of Colorado. That's for free. amazing. That's and awesome. you could rent a GoPro and make your park going experience um, into a movie that people then can rent out from the local library. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much stuff that you can do at your local library. So, go get your library card. That's first and foremost. You have to have a library card to participate in any of this stuff. Yes. I think. Yes, and mine you I do. Know, get one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Become a card-holding member. Hi, guys. This is Kristen from the Unbound Book Babes. And if you're enjoying our content, please buy us a coffee with our link down below in the description box. We really love doing this for you each week. Bobby puts in a lot of time and effort editing these videos. Getting sponsors and ads really ruins the flow of an episode. And we want to make sure that we are bringing you the most authentic videos and authentic reviews and that we are not, you know, being swayed by sponsorships. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead and buy us a coffee in the description below. Thank you and enjoy today's episode. I found something a tool for Google Chrome. It's a Google Chrome extension that is helpful for finding things like if a book is at your library or not. So let me show you guys what I found. So this is called the library extension. And I'm just going to go ahead and add to Chrome. I'm going to say add extension. And now it like tells you like how to get started and stuff like that. So I'm, I already read through this because I had it installed. I just uninstalled it to show you guys um, how to do it and how easy it is. So I'm going to go up to my extensions and I am going to go to options. And then I'm actually going to choose my state. And then I'm going to find my library. It took me forever to find it earlier because I'm silly. And I'm going to add that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's going to add this, but I can also add Hoopla. I can add openlibraryarchive.org. I can oh, I can have Libro FM on there, and I can have Kobo Plus on there as well. Yeah, so I'm going to say add all of that stuff and we're good to go. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a new tab and I'm going to um, search. Let's just search Outlander. Or The Witcher. The Witcher might make more sense. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do The Witcher for my example earlier. So I'm going to say The Witcher. Everybody, just shout a book at Bobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to scroll. I should have said not the TV show. Hold on just a sec. Book. So now, like, if I go to Amazon, that's a complete box set. So I don't know if that's going to work. Let me go pick up. Fuck. And I'm just going to put Barnes and Nobles just as an example. So what's your book series? I'm going to click on it and then it's going to bring up the books and I'm going to click on sort of destiny because that's the next one that I'll be reading. But then look at, look at what it does. So it tells me one of one copies at my Muskegon area district library on Hoopla, the Witcher, a grain of truth. It's a comic 
it tells me that this is available on Hoopla. Nothing on Open Library, Libro FM. Sword of Destiny is an audiobook on Libro FM, and it's still searching Kobo catalog. But then I can like click borrow, and it's going to bring me. Oh, no, I thought that said book 15 for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> 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 but um, I can place a hold, I can save for later. So this. This, I'm not logged into it, but this is through my library. Isn't that sweet? That is very cool. Yeah. And this will work on, so like if we go back, we can even see it on, let me just do Amazon. Amazon, The Witcher Books, click on it. It's thinking. It's still thinking, guys. Where's there it goes there the plugin is so it's over here and it's saying what do I have or don't have so this is book three and it is not at my library oh it is at my library but it's not available and it's an audiobook twelve holds estimated weight so that might be also linking it to Libby as a digital copy because it's an audiobook yep so it's on Libro FM but pretty cool. And the big reason we keep searching Witcher, uh, I think in June, we are going to do an episode comparing the first two books to the season net to season one on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you can fight us for a hold at one of these libraries. <laughs> and read along read with it. us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so start reading. Are they pretty long books? Um... <sighs> <laughs> she wasn't I, prepared for that question. <laughs> I'm gonna say I don't think so. Okay. I am reading mine on my Kindle. I'm like 50% through. I have not spent many hours reading it. I just haven't spent a lot of time reading it either. If that makes right. sense. But yeah, it's the book is kind of how long they are. So you guys better get started reading right now. The book stressed me out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby what's your big takeaway from today's episode what's something you think you'd rent from a library that's not yard games I'm so excited to use that yard games yeah I'm I that like that's just like outside of obviously books but like <laughs> <laughs> yard games I'm so excited like so much of my life is spent outside so mm -hmm. um that's in that's just incredible and awesome so i'm excited to utilize that this summer yeah i think that we should revitalize a lot of the stuff from the 80s and 90s that was cheap back then and like family friendly cheap places to go yes so this is my call to action to all millennials and gen zers and etc i'd like to bring back skate rinks like skate city you know, you go spend $5 and then $4 on skates. How great of a day would that be? Go to Skate City for a couple of hours, and then you spend your 8 bucks there, 9 bucks there. Go to the library, pick out a book, and then you go home and just read. And boom, you spent a whole day out, and you only spent $9. Be sure to check out your local library. Tell us in the comments below something that you've utilized at your local library that is was really helpful to you that might not be a book. So uh, until next time, keep reading.